everybody and welcome back to another video uh, so recently I've been getting into crocheting um, it's something that I've seen some of my friends do before and I actually had someone in my class my senior year of college that would always crochet just as a as a way to keep her hands busy as opposed to say using fidget spinners or things like that and it always seemed simple enough to try so I got this big old thing of wool it's not actually that big but it was only $1.99 at Walmart and the hook was only $1.28 I think so I thought it was pretty cheap to just kind of try and see if I was any good here's the first thing I actually made and um, it, it's not good it's um, very ugly actually <laughs> um, I kind of just kept stringing and stringing and stringing in that first chain until I eventually thought it kind of looked decent um, or until I kind of got the hang of it before adding stuff to it and it definitely started off kind of rough but the reason I wanted to make this video is because I wanted to show you guys eight things that I wish someone would have told me when I got started with my crocheting so the first thing has to do with the slip knot and I'm gonna walk you through a lot of the basics today and really the first thing that I wish anyone would have told me about this slip knot is that it doesn't have to be done in exactly the same way um, I, I watched a lot of videos that were like, put your fingers in it and twist and turn. The basics of it is, is, it's exactly the same as a regular knot, it's just done with a loop instead of a single strand. So that when you tie the knot through it, um, the loop remains outside. So as you can see here, instead of sticking the whole um, piece through, I'm just pulling through a sizable loop and then tightening the bottom around it. Boom. And there we have it, a slip knot so we can get started. So the first thing you're going to do is take your hook, slip it through the uh, loop, and you're going to start uh, making this first chain stitch. Note, uh, this is something that was very important to me. You don't need to weave the yarn around the hook. It's okay to wrap it with your fingers. It still works just fine. In a lot of the tutorials I watched, it said, uh, move your hook this way and wrap it around the the yarn um it's okay to just move the yarn around it i think it's easier and a lot faster especially since you're trying to maintain tension on your back arm anyway i also like to just kind of leave a little bit of yarn hanging out so that i don't have to keep pulling straight from it and as you can see you just kind of wrap the yarn around the hook and pull through when i first started i also wasn't sh super certain of why twisting the hook was super necessary until i figured out that it really just stops the hook from getting caught on the loop that you're working on so when you move it down towards the bottom of that loop it moves through way way smoother and as you can see here it's totally okay if your hook slips out of the loop just relocate the loop that you're currently on and stick it back in it's okay it's not going to ruin the look of it just keep going so here I ended up making 10 loops always 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 count your loops I made this mistake the first couple times and figured I'd just be able to see them um, it's so easy to kind of skip or miss something so don't be afraid to actually take a look now when you're adding a new row it's very similar to your first chain stitch don't be afraid to use your fingers to guide the yarn um, if the hook's in a rough position. Um, especially with this yarn that I'm using, it did kind of get stuck in a couple of different ways. And I'll show you that a little bit later as it happens a little better on camera. But all you're going to do to add stuff or add a row is stick your hook through the next loop and pull through like you would for a normal chain stitch so that you have two loops on your crochet hook. And then you're going to do another chain stitch but all the way through both so that you're back to one. And this is what I was talking about a little earlier when it kind of got stuck in between the strands. I just kind of fixed it with my hands and kept going. Now, if you can't tell right now, this doesn't look super cute. Um, it's, and it's not super obvious that it's going to look great initially, but trust that you're doing it right. Follow the technique and keep going. Uh, through with it. I promise by the time you're done with the row, it's going to look a lot more like what you're imagining it's going to look like. But while you're doing these initial crochets, it's not going to look perfect. As you can see, I just tightened it up and you can tell that it's definitely looking the way it's supposed to. It just looks a little messy the first couple times while you're pulling things through because the yarn isn't necessarily being pulled in that direction, if that makes sense. Alright, so I'm just going to finish up this top row here and power through. Thank you. 
All right, so here that is. And here I am counting the loops again, making sure that I still have 10. Seems good to me. Now to add to the next row, you're just gonna flip it over so that you're going in the same direction you have been and start again, going through the loop directly next to it and then pulling through both loops that that results in. All right, now here I am on row four. It's a four by 10. Uh, however, I did notice that one of my loops on this fourth row really looks kind of messy. So if it doesn't look good, just pull. Everything will come undone back to the point that you want and just try again. And I really should have tightened this loop a little bit here so it didn't look as loose, but I was just, you know, going through for filming purposes. But I once, on my first project, I actually did a yellow scarf. I totally undid probably half the scarf and then went back and did it again. So it's okay to want to start over and it's encouraged to start over. If you aren't happy with the way something looks, the more that you practice and the more that you go through stuff, the better it's gonna look, honestly. So don't be afraid to start over. And here I'm just showing you if I were to finish this piece, I would go through and I would tie a knot around this last loop and take any remaining edges and kind of just sew it as you would a running stitch back and forth through the edges just so it doesn't look messy. And that's the basics of getting some crocheting done. So I used a ball of yarn, that $1.99 bar ball from uh, Walmart, and I actually ended up with an entire scarf out of that. Um, it was probably about four, four and a half feet long by the time I was done, and I believe I did 15 stitches across for every row. And I actually think it works great as sort of, not so much a scarf to keep you warm, but one that you might use for aesthetic purposes. This was the first project that I ever did, um, and because I wanted to make it an infinity scarf, I did just kind of take any extra tails at the end and sewed them back and forth. Here's the first part of my scarf. As you can see, it was kind of loose and kind of messy, but this is the opposite end. Obviously, because I sewed both sides together, um, I'm able to see the contrast between where I started and where I ended. And I think, if anything, this just proves that continuing to go through, and even if you're on the same project, it's gonna make a huge difference. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you next Sunday for another craft. See ya!